Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sunny Side Up. And with us today, we have the renowned director and writer Sudhir Mishra ji. Welcome to the show, Sudhir ji. How are you? Not bad. Managing. <laughs> That's very good. So you know, growing up, uh, we I've seen your work. I'm sure others have seen your work as well. And we are so uh, in awe of uh, everything you do. Uh, all the films that you made, uh, starting with, uh, I mean, you you actually wrote Jane Bido Yaro, and that's one of my all-time favorites. Because I think uh, if you look at your graph, uh, the way your uh, career has progressed, we have seen such great work coming from you. So just for example, Aapki Hazaro uh, Kwahishen. You know, so I before I start asking you questions about projects itself, Aapki jo maternal grandfather hain. Wo politics se the, and your, you know, your father was from the the arts, as was your younger he brother. He was from the academic world. My my father was a mathematician, uh, a scientist, technocrat. Retired as a vice chancellor of BHU. Uh, was in CSIR and Council of Scientific Industrial Research. So I mean, yeah, mathematician, scientist, technocrat. Yeah. Excellent. So basically, jo apka, your uh, leaning towards the arts, was it, would you credit that to your brother or do you credit that to, uh, who do you credit that to? Initially, my father, both my brother and I, all of us would, would have got it because my father was also the founder of the Lucknow Film Society. Correct. So, I mean, around the time when everybody was founding film societies, including Mr. Ray and people in the 50s in Calcutta, so inspired by Ray and a man called Satish Bahadur and Aparna Sen's dad, Chitanandas Gupta. All these people were, I mean, if you you know, know the history of film societies, then, you know, this is way beyond our time. But this is when my dad started, you know, getting involved with film because he'd been in Paris and he'd done his doctorate in, in, in mathematics from Paris. And I guess he got interested in cinema there. And then, you know, he came back to his hometown and, and founded a film society. So I guess, you know, I mean, the, because of him, I must have got inclined, you know. Uh, I mean, he, and wherever he went, in fact, when he went to Sagar and he was a professor, he got very involved in the arts and, you know, he encouraged young people to, to do theater and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, uh, I, I guess, you know, I'm a, both my brother and I must have got triggered because of my father. That's yep. a lot because of my father. Yeah. A lot because of your father. So you have, uh, you know, in, in several uh, interviews that I watched, uh, you've credited your brother and you, you admire your brother for starting you in this industry. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? How, how did he inspire you? Well, my brother was, bright. I mean, this, you know, I mean, he was more bright and, you know, I mean, he, he, he had a natural flair for a lot of things. He was in very interested in music. You know, I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm a product of little hard work, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, he, he, he was naturally very brilliant boy, you know, I mean, I think too brilliant for his own good and too, too, too uh, you know, soft and sensitive and, you know, you have to be a bit more practical to be in the business that we are in. But yeah, he, he was a national science talent scholar. He could have got admission anywhere. He went to the film, he went to St. Stephen's College. Then he got inter interested in theater. We were all interested in theater. So when I came to Delhi, you know, he'd come on there earlier. I got involved in theater where he had, was, he was more moving around with, uh, you know, Badal Sarkar and he had joined a workshop, was a great director. So he kind of, I kind of followed him, even though he was my younger brother. So I sort of joined that theater. Then he went to the Institute, right? And, and I sort of said, oh, you know, I, but I went to, you know, Bombay and I started assisting and he was studying in the Institute and he, whatever he would learn in terms of craft and all, he'd teach me. So I, I'm, I'm, I always say that I'm from the Film Institute through my brother. Of course, there are other teachers. Uh, I mean, there is Kundan who triggered a kind of, you know, confidence in me. And, I, and sometimes, you know, because you work in Jane with Arrow, you, you, I found my own style when I was working with him. It wasn't exactly his style. So, I mean, there is always a comic edge to in my film sometimes, you know. 
within 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 the series there is an element like if you go to hazaro khwaish aise you don't know whether the last scene is terrifying or funny you know the cops have lost the gun and the, there's no bullet in it you know because you know it's it's kind of terrifying and funny at the same time right so uh, i kind of found my grammar it wasn't as spoofy as jane bidero which which not something it came naturally to me later it was it was kind of a real funny you know simultaneously you know so i mean i i credit i i found found that i was a filmmaker and it's it's the grace of people like vinod chopra uh, said mirza kundan shah who allowed me to learn on the job right i mean you you got i mean i i came from an academic background so i mean uh, uh, if you were studying and doing research you would have been getting 400 bucks and you know uh, you know you would have been uh, paying for the hostel and eating bad food here yeah, there was somebody you know you know allowing you to work allowing you to learn paying you <laughs> you know and and uh, you know i used to find it fascinating i went to uh, a shoot and they were giving you food right and three times a day and i mean for somebody from a from a from an academic background this yeah. is fascinating this is great you know so i mean i think it was uh, i found my family and i found uh, people who taught me and looked after me and and, uh, and there yeah. was one who sort of there for some time then he passed to bengali but for the first 15 years of my stay in the city he was there as well so how how did you sort of uh, pick your style i mean what you just said that uh, you know films like uh, jane bido yaro etc uh, shaped your style uh, what do you credit you know with uh, with shaping your style because you have a very distinct style of filmmaking yeah. which we all love i don't know you have to i mean there are in cinema you know and there are a lot of people who have made films before me before anyone so uh, the act of making films is both an act of arrogance and an act of humility right you, it's an act of arrogance because uh, you know so many people have done uh, so many greats have come before you yet you say i have a story to tell i have a film to make watch my film right so in a sense it's kind of arrogant but you have to be very humble in front of the medium i i kind of uh, as other people need to find out who i am and i mean if i become very self conscious as a filmmaker if i say oh this is who i am right then you know it, it's the end of then you know you are you are always trying to second guess and you are trying to predict a, an outcome of a film i think it's a little if you better there's a little mystery it's nice but you know i mean for example Uh, somebody said uh, I, i mean good critics or people somebody wrote an article about me and said you know this is the anatomy of grays so i mean i i think that's what interests me you know that that you know that it's the scale on which we all are you know you know i mean that sometimes we shift here the heroism is a temporary thing that you know human beings are frail that that uh, you know so in your opinion how you know, has the it jane all the films that i have made you know manu joseph who's a writer whose film i'm i'm making a film based on his book called serious men call me a collector of frail men right so i mean you'd have to uh, you'd have to ask other people you know i i think you know i naturally when i was working with jane vidaro i discovered a kind of a, a style of my own which was that i was making uh, films which are kind of in a sense not just mere naturalism or realism but that there was a point of view in them and that we were you know i was making films about people at the edge it's is that it's, it's a bit of a mystery but if you remain very loyal to the craft and if you bring your own personality into your work if you have your own unique way of telling things if you if you don't listen in a sense you are stubborn because you have to be stubborn 
you have to do things exactly the way you think it should be done you have you have to have this mad passion so in your opinion how has the industry changed because i see there's a lot of back and forth about uh, bollywood chodo um, you know and that was something that everybody is wondering about i don't like well, some of us don't like the word we didn't come here to 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 this it's a more hollywood bollywood there's some kind of mimicry to the you know what the hell is this and and you know there is this indian film industry or you could say the hindi film industry now the hindi film industry is not is not governed totally now if you look at it by say people from the hindi heartland let's say or it was always governed let's say by the popular industry was governed by say sometimes financiers which were belong to one community mostly the producers were from uh, you know punjabis or from lahore or whatever the most many screenplay writers were from bengal right the dialogue writer was from in, from the hindi heartland so you know in a sense that potpourri of talents from all over the country became what was the mumbai film industry or the hindi film industry and because that was the language that was most spoken it became somewhat they said the bigger industry till the south industry came up and together tamil and telugu is as big as hindi and some would say bigger and and then there is the industry in the east and there is bengal and there is assam and there is kerala with many wonderful films so some of us want to i mean we we came here admiring ray and ghatak and guru dutt and adur and arvindan and you know so many of filmmakers no and rishida and sham benegal so i mean we belong to the hindi film industry or let's say the indian film industry and this whole bollywood bollywood is a synonym for a lifestyle you know you get waylaid into buying uh, you know into buying underwear as you want to walk walking into the film or vice versa you know so i mean that's okay i mean i'm not saying you know, it's a popular it's a it's a commercial world and and you know things have it's cost money and it cost money to show a film in a proper way it cost money to you know there's real estate and you know because we don't believe that the arts are of any importance the world has slowly started to not believe it right so one one army jet sorti so do can <laughs> cost more money than you know i mean for promoting the arts let's say in, in for a month or so, let's say but you know you we don't believe in that you know so you know i guess commercialism is a bit necessary and and uh, one is not knocking the fact that a film needs to get earn money and get its uh, investment back but you know the primary motivation is to tell a story that you want to tell in a way that engages maybe a lot of people right and hopefully you know the budgets of the film therefore are determined by how many people you will appeal to so if you are lucky and you appeal to a lot of people your budgets will be bigger and maybe bigger stars will want to work with you and therefore your budgets will be even bigger and if you can control all the stars and and the system and still make a film that is yours you are kind of unique and those unique people will go down in history right or you may be the kind of film, person who makes personal films and a kind of films and then you have to understand that your budgets will not be that big that you have to work with more interesting uh, story lines more interesting narratives more you know and and uh, if you do that then you know you you have a life ahead of you as, a, as another kind of filmmaker so there's sham benegal right he's had a successful career as anybody with a lot of films but always stayed within a budget stayed within a kind of filmmaking stayed right and then sort of overextend himself most times you know and and therefore has 
probably the most successful career of anyone in, in, in this industry. I mean, starting off in 1974-75, he was making films till two, three, four years ago. In 2015, he's made films, you know. So, I mean, I think there's a life. I mean, you have to understand who you are. That's the first thing for a filmmaker to understand is understand yourself. Understand your own rhythm. Understand your own proclivities. And be satisfied with, with, with who you are. Because mimicry... Uh, you know, will not get you anywhere. You have to find yourself. You know. And then if you are, you know, Manmohan Desai or if you are Frank Capra or if you are Charlie Chaplin or if you are Coppola or if you are, you know, whoever, you know, I mean, then, then you, God bless you. I mean, take off, make a lot of money. And that is also, I mean, which doesn't demean you as an artist because, I mean, if you can make it with money while retaining the kind of films that you want to make. Well, God bless you, you know, you're, you're one of the lucky few. So, right now with the, you know, with the passing of Sushant Singh Rajput, I think the industry is on its head. Everything is upside down. Um, you know, most actors who do not have a godfather, so to speak, or some kind of a relationship in the industry, they feel that they don't have proper representation and they are not able to land good roles. What's your take on that? Sushant is a tragedy. He was a, 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 a loved actor. And uh, he succeeded when he did television, as far as I know. I, I'm not much of a follower of television, but uh, he was a very successful television actor. Uh, then when he came into films, his first film, Kai Poche, was a pretty successful film uh, made by Abhishek Kapoor. But two, uh, uh, then I think for some time it hit a roadblock. Uh, I didn't personally know him very well and I am... Uh, I regret that I, 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 I don't know him well because I, he never reached out to me. And uh, uh, I once asked Mukesh and then he was busy at that time and then I made another film. Uh, so, uh, but uh, why somebody does what he does is a, I'm, I'm, I have a background in psychology and I, I would have been a clinical psychologist if I had not been a filmmaker. In fact, I was applying to Ohio State University to do an MPhil in psychology when I then shifted to the arts and became, became a filmmaker and followed my brother to here. But uh, why somebody does what he does is a complicated issue. There are groups in the film industry. There, were, there are powerful people in the film industry. Uh, I have been a victim sometimes of power politics of this film industry. Uh, you have to take it on the chin, uh, which is why we are saying that uh, not Bollywood, but cinema, right? And we are saying we came here to make films and that Manoj Vajpayee today is as relevant as anyone else on an OTT platform or anywhere else and that we'll make films with I'm making a film with Nawaz or, or, or somebody even younger. When I made Hazaro, there was nobody known. Right? It was Chitrangada's first film. It was KK's almost first release. It was Shiny Auja's first film. All the other actors, almost, it was their first film. The cameraman's first feature, but he was French. The, you know, the, it was Shantanu Mohitra's first film. It was Swanand Kirkire's first film. Right. So, I mean, it was Ram Kapoor's first film. Right. This is, this is before he became a television star. So, those many new people came into this industry. After that, you know, Ram Kapoor became a big television name. You know, Shiny did whatever and whatever happened to him. Chitrangada did what she did. KK did what she did. Shantanu became a Swanand is a lyric writer. Now, after this, all of them, their children will become... 
children of successful people. 